to meet today's guest. She won an Olympic bronze medal in Athens. She won Commonwealth gold. She was a mentor on CBBC's Ultimate Sports Day. It's Kelly Southerton. Oh. Hi. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Now, you are a heptathlete. You take part in seven events. How do you train and prepare for so many different disciplines? I have a very well-structured training programme um, that's put together by my coach. So I, I do a technical event and a strength and a run most days. So um, things I'm weakest at, like the throwing, I probably do more often than I would jumping. So I have to concentrate on my weak events than my strong events. But it is, it's, crowd, it's a very crowded yeah. week. You know all about the, uh, the atmosphere in the Olympics. How do you think it's going to affect London when it comes to sound? And also our younger athletes taking part. I think being at a home Olympics can be immense. The, the crowd are going to be so supportive of everybody and they're just going to lift and give everyone an extra centimetre, an extra tenth. You know, that enthusiasm to go past the next person in front of them. We've got to quickly mention Jess Ennis because she's a heptathlete. Do you know her? She's carrying so many aspirations. You know, everyone expects her to win a medal. Is she going to do it? How will she be feeling? If there's any time Jess is going to win a gold medal, it's this summer because she has... Um, She's done so well this summer and all the odds are on in her favour and she's had such a great summer and she's had the great preparation. So, yeah, my fingers are crossed for her. Come on, well, Jess. You have yet to face your biggest challenge on today's show when we test your strength a bit later, but now let's talk about... <laughs> Aren't they just incredible? Yeah, they're amazing. Not only completely in sync, but upside down and twisting left and right. It's, it's amazing. Good luck to the girls in the Olympics. Now, if you come to Saffron Walton today for our live free event... From... <laughs> down thank you from 10 o'clock onwards there are loads of things that you can do loads of activities and one of those is kind of a blue peter make so we thought it'd be a good chance to show you how to do it now you can make yourself a fully functioning <laughs> hand <laughs> how good is that it's very simple you need to uh, build all the bones up and build all the tendons up we'll show you how to do that you need all the bits first which are a straw you need some string you need card you need some tape and some scissors first thing you need to do is get yourself some card Put your hand on top of it and draw around it. I'm sure you've done it loads of times in art class and painted nail varnish on. I know I did. And then you'll end up with this. That's stage one. Then you need to stick the bones onto the hand. Kelly, do you know how many bones there are in the hand? I do. I think there's 19 bones in the hand. There are 19. Yeah. You have the phalanges, which are the little ones, which I love the fact that they're called phalanges. I thought Phoebe made that up. Phalanges <laughs> here in the fingers. You have three in the fingers and two in the thumb. And you have your metacarpals, which are these long ones here in the hand. So we're going to stick these together. We're learning via play. Yes, yeah. So let's cut the straw first. You can hold that for me, please. Let's do the phalanges first. Let's do three of them for the finger. And then we need one big one for the metacarpal. Think about three times the size of a phalange. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say on TV. <laughs> OK, and then what you need to do, Kelly, if you wouldn't mind, is stick them down in place. OK. Just like that. And once you've done that, you'll end up with something like this. Here's one somebody else made earlier. Oh, no, it's nice, isn't it? Make sure you've got them in the right line and you'll find out. Did you know that 25% of injuries are actually in the hand or the wrists? No, I didn't. Well, there you go. There you go. You've learned a few <laughs> things today, how to make a fully functioning hand and some facts about it. Uh, once you've got these bits here, you need to feed in the tendons. Those are the bits, of course, that make the bones move and work. And to do that, you need some string with a knot in the end, for obvious reasons, because otherwise it would just pull straight through. So if you can start feeding that through there for me, please, Kelly. Oh! Thank you. Sorry. It is a bit fiddly, but bear with it, and eventually you'll manage to get all the tendons through. Just like that. Just like that. It does, it does take a bit of fiddle. But it this does. is the final thing once <laughs> you've managed to do it. You can, you can choose any colour you like, of course, for this. But that is our fully functioning hand. What do we think? Let's give a wave to the crowd. <laughs> or or may, maybe even a, uh, a thumbs up. I'm not working at this. How's that? A thumbs up? That kind of works. Kelly, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, if you want to have a go at that, make sure you do when you're at home. Right then. A record that stands to this day, that's 44 years later, what an incredible man. But apparently it's because of the altitude, the air was a lot thinner and that's why he could jump further. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of world records broken in that year in 1968 because Mexico City is above a certain uh, level, above sea level and the air's thinner. So you can run faster and jump higher. Brilliant. But it's still a well-worthy jump, isn't it? No. Now, you've faced some <laughs> challenges in your time, haven't you, Kelly? But this is the test of strength. How yes. are you feeling? I'm very nervous. I'm hopefully the crowd will get behind Come on, me. the crowd will get behind you. Walden. Let's get a channel. If we take a look last week, Joe Swash managed Kelly, to get a really good Kelly, score. Kelly. Just above 80. Woo! Oh. You just missed that. That was just short of 100. But I think that counts, even though I didn't hit the bell. That was, uh, that was definitely 100, wasn't it? What do we think, Kraus? Yeah, it was 100. Yeah. Fantastic.
Well Since what it's about, Kelly. Olympians, right. just step up and just whack it and get that was 100. impressive. Just well one-handed as well. Right. It's getting exciting now, isn't it? So let's just take a look. She's so excited. How has that affected the leaderboard? Well, Helen is now in gold medal position <laughs> with 22 <laughs> points. It's not over till it's over. I tell you what, though, it's not just me doing it for the girls today. Can we get an action replay, please, <laughs> of Kelly Southerton's strength test? Here she goes, like a true Olympian, didn't even wait for the countdown. She just sauntered up, smacked it, and it went all the way to the top. Kelly, very well proud. Congratulations there. Right, that's all. Well, that's it for the show, but... Myself and Kelly are going to be sticking around all day. If you're anywhere near Saffron Walden, do come and see us. It's a free, non-ticketed event. There's loads you can try out. We're back on the CBC channel at 5.45. Make sure you join us there. Let's get one final cheer for the crowd before we go. <laughs>